What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop, and today I'm going to be talking about the past, present, and future of Audemars Piguet. Boom, watch fam. Today I'm wearing a really fantastic watch um, from the Theo and Harris shop. This is a, a Cartier Tank Jumbo. Um, traditionally, the Tank Louis is significantly smaller than this example, but this example, which dates to the 1970s, which was the first automatic Tank Louis, um, really is just much more you know, modern. I happen to love the old, you know, vintage small proportions of, of, of the Tank Louis, but there's no denying that there is a, a modern elegance and appeal to this case, uh, and I, I love the elongated crown. So if you know me, you know I'm usually wearing a Cartier, and uh, this is a pretty terrific example. It is available in the Theo and Harris watch shop, along with a host of other brands, like Rolex, Omega, Patek Philippe, and even Audemars Piguet, which is a great segue into today's conversation. So we released a similar video to this just last week, and the subject was Tag Heuer. I talked about some of the problems that Tag Heuer faces as a brand, and their biggest problem being their again, a fundamental lack of identity. And I offered a couple of suggestions for their path forward. I think things are going to be just fine with Tag, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it all plays out. But the video was super well received, and you guys really seemed to enjoy the conversation that was not just limited to one particular model, but took on kind of a, a larger you know, subject, an entire brand, their catalog, their purpose, um, their future, good and bad. So like I said, today, we're gonna to be talking about AP. So why AP? Well, they've recently released a new watch into their collection. And it was a surprising release because the watch community uh, isn't used to seeing AP release anything but Royal Oaks ever. So to see something new and something different from the brand, and now come to think of it, it's actually the second time we've seen something new and different from the brand in the last year, got me thinking about AP as a brand, AP's biggest problem, which is the fact that they are, for all intents and purposes, a one watch manufacturer, the Royal Oak, that's it. And it got me thinking about this watch, its merits and inspirations. So, why? Why this watch? Why now? Where is AP headed? So let's talk about this particular watch to start. In short, it's an homage to a lovely uh, vintage AP chronograph from 1943. And this homage is being billed as a remaster. And I like that term. I mean, the term remaster as opposed to uh, some of the terms that brands like Longines and you know, Oris and other brands use, like just heritage or re-edition. Remaster is a richer word. But with this fancier term comes a burden, a pretty significant burden to improve, not just pay homage to. So what exactly about this remaster is improved from the original? To point out the differences, for starters, this piece features three tones instead of two, like its inspiration. You have a champagne dial fitted atop the pink and steel case, as opposed to the pink dial, pink and steel case. But frankly, and I'd love your thoughts on this, please comment down below what you think, but I think the two-tone configuration was richer, more, more conservative and subtle. It had a soft-spoken appeal, whereas this watch with the three tones, particularly the champagne dial right up front, I think it loses that. The second big difference is the movement. While the original watch was powered by AP's 13VZAH, which was based on the famous Valju 13 line movement, there is no denying that the remaster is supreme mechanically. Pairing the watch is Audemars Piguet's new caliber, the 4409, which is an in-house automatic flyback chronograph movement with a 70 hour power reserve. It's, it's a modified version of the movement that's found in the code 1159 chronograph. Obviously it's complicated, but it's also large, so it fills the case back really well. It's beautifully decorated throughout, and in development, this movement, its release, was an impressive feat for AP that wasn't really talked about when the 1159 was introduced, because the 1159 uh, you know, got so much attention, mostly criticism, for its design, that a lot of the actual development and hard work that went into releasing the watches didn't really get the big focus of conversation. Um, but now, taking a step back, you know, a year later, we're seeing a very similar movement, the same base movement um, in this watch, and we actually have the opportunity to say, let's have a closer look. So there's no doubt in my mind that this remaster is fantastic, far superior than the watch's inspiration. So yes, mechanically, this watch certainly is a remaster. 
but with this new and incredibly well-decorated and architected movement does come new proportions. The original watch from 1943 measured 36 millimeters in diameter and about six millimeters in thickness. And this example comes in at, at 40 millimeters in diameter, which is a pretty significant change, but even more significantly at 14 and a half millimeters in thickness. That is more than double. So the remaster, while yes, features the same fundamental design traits like the lugs, the two-tone cases, the original, Really, that's where the similarities end. The proportions are entirely different, making this watch a very distant cousin to the original at best. So my question is, why? Why didn't AP opt for, while modern, classical, uh, traditional profile? Is it possibly because AP believes that their clientele would be off-put by a manually wound watch? I highly doubt it. That path is actively proven by so many models, um, even from AP's you know, Holy Trinity brother, Patek Philippe, with the 5070, which was a significant watch, but still, I believe, under 12 millimeters in thickness. Uh, and and the, then the successor, the 5170, same conversation. We may be talking even in the 11s. These were uh, watches with a much more um, classical, traditional presence, while certainly not being, you know, uh, uh, re-editions or homages. These watches weren't pretending to be vintage. They were modern, but they stayed true to their brand and design and messaging beyond the, you know, little nods to the past. So to me, the term remaster was a term too bold. Do the designers behind this release truly feel that this watch in totality is an improvement from the original? I doubt it, but I still love the watch. And here's why. A little over a year ago, AP was a one-trick pony. Their millenary line was admired by many, including myself, but really only the Royal Oak was important to the world. Only the Royal Oak was important to culture. It was the only watch in their collection that mattered. Now, the Royal Oak is a hell of a watch, and if it wasn't, it certainly couldn't hold up a brand almost single-handedly for this long. Even looking beyond the beautiful, albeit a little bit lazy, 15202, uh, the Royal Oak is a, is a dynamic collection. Even if you look at their new models, look how well AP evolved the Royal Oak, whether it's their Ultra Slim Perpetual, which was one of the most fantastic watches of the last 10 years, I think, or even their releases in ceramic, which, while not my style, are fantastic evolutions of the Royal Oak. AP has done a fantastic job evolving that collection. But, Having a one watch catalog, no matter how interesting and beautiful or desirable that one watch may be, isn't a good thing. So the brand being very self-aware and taking on this problem that the whole world was talking about fought to be dynamic. And through their release of the 1159, while maybe criticized in 2019, and now the release of the remaster, they're actually beginning to achieve it. So for the first time, and I don't even know how long, you've got these two collections that sit beside the king, that sit beside the Royal Oak. You've got the 1159, which is the future of the brand. And you've got this heritage collection. No, a remastered collection, which is what I believe will come of this you know, first self-winding chronograph. And through these three collections, as different as they may seem, there's synergy. There's the Audemars Piguet identity in each one of them. So while most people are not realizing it yet, I know it may be a little bit hard to believe, but right now we are actually seeing the future of this brand. One trick pony no longer. And while I do have my complaints, I'm sure the remaster will be a welcome addition to watch collections around the world. But much more importantly, this new model is the start of the next chapter of an extremely exciting journey for the brand. And I can't wait to see where it takes us. Thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe down below if you love watches. And if you liked this video, go ahead and like it. Uh, more importantly than any of that, comment down below your thoughts. Um, are you a Royal Oak owner? What do you think is the future of this Holy Trinity brand? I'll see you all next time.